SMQB's episode 106, March Madness, is here. And I have a question for you. Since expanding to 64 teams, and I guess now 68, whatever the heck we're doing, has a six seed ever won the tournament? It seems like a trick question. A six seed. Like a seven has, an eight has. I'm going to guess that a six hasn't. Anyone else? You don't know. Plus he's all going to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to guess UConn was a six at some point, so I'll say yes. Okay. Well, House is wrong. Hope is right, but with the wrong team. UConn was a seven seed. Right. Hmm. And the, the the lowest seed, House, you should know this. It's Villanova, 1985. Yeah, an eight seed. A six seed did win in 1988. Syracuse. Led by, no, led by. Oh, one, Danny Manning. Danny Manning. When the Miracles, yep, Kansas. Kansas went through um, Xavier, Murray State, Vanderbilt, K State, Duke, oh, yeah. and Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, that's the only six seed. It's weird to imagine Kansas is a six seed. Yeah. Uh, but 33 out of 37 NCAA tournament winners were one, two, or three seeds. Wow. So th- keep that in mind while you fill out your brackets. Mm. This Too week. late. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, hey, we, we have another tat amongst us. Oh, we're batting oh, 400. Yeah. We are wow, batting 400. We're getting closer. Those House, are all same numbers. House, where'd you put that bad boy? Uh, you know how how fast I run in my strong right quadricep. So it's yeah. fine. I, you know, it's on the winning thigh. Okay. Your punting thigh. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not was that it, bad. It really is. It's not that bad. Uh, was it considered, did you get a lasso from the family or a punchable face from your family for, for getting uh, it? It's a mix. It's a mix. It's, a, it's definitely a mix. There's yeah. some, some punches, some lassos. So. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be about right. That makes sense. But the wife is so. totally on board. So that's, that's, oh, that's, that's all, all, that all that matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, that is all that matters. That's right. So, all right. When, listen, when's, hey, when's yours, Bison? Well, we're negotiating uh, dates. I can't do, I have a March 15th, 1 p.m. option, but uh, I'm not available at that time. So I'm trying to lock down a date. I'd suggest so. a six hour tat during March Madness on Friday. It's a perfect way to watch games. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. <laughs> that does sound good. Uh, maybe I should go tomorrow morning. I just had a deposition canceled. Um, well, this is it. This is March Madness. We're here. It's what this uh, this pod's going to be dedicated to, which uh, means at the end of the show, you can do one of two things. You can take all of our advice and <laughs> run with it, or you can take all of our advice and run away from it. Um, and make, and make some money. <laughs> yeah, it might be the better way to go, but let's get to it. Uh, we're just going to go region by region and house. Get us started, house with the Midwest. Okay, so so the plan is we're going to go through these regions, just talk about them a little bit. We want to get your best game for each each person who's presenting one. House, give, you're going to give us your best game at some point out of the Midwest. You're going to give us your sleeper. And then we want to get at the end of the after we go through all of it, we'll get everyone's final four championship game champion. Um, so go ahead and kick best off first the, round game or in the bracket. Um, well, I think whatever you yes. want to do, Just whatever. whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. So how start us off with the Midwest? Yeah. So the Midwest has uh, Houston as the number one seed in uh what some folks was thought was a, a little bit of a surprise to send Kansas out West, but um, 
there are potentially a lot of great games. There's a lot of great talent, a lot of great scoring, a lot of great guards. I think the Midwest is going to be incredibly entertaining. I believe that the way that this will play out is you will have vying for the sweet 16, a matchup between Texas and Texas A&M. I, I think uh, Penn state's little Cinderella run and their darling coach, Micah Shrewsbury, who might end up at, at Georgetown. Uh, I think Penn state is, is going to run out of gas and A&M is going to win the opening round game. Texas will handle the great three point shooting Colgate who, uh, who will give them a little bit of a scare, but then boy, will that be some hell of a matchup between Texas and Texas A&M to get into the sweet 16. I believe that will be one of the better games of the Midwest and one of the better games of the tournament. I think it will play out that way. My sleeper is uh, every year. I think that the stat is, I, I forget, maybe Pope might have this stat at some point. He always seems to have something like this, but well, the 12 the number, over five. Yeah. He's it's like 50, got, it's like 56 percent, I think, right now, 12 it's over five. Incredible. The 12 versus five stat in the NCAAs. And I do believe you will get one of your 12 wins in the Midwest. Uh, Drake is on a heater. Number 12, Drake has won 13 out of 14. They've got a, a star in Tucker DeVries who scores almost 20 points per game. And while Miami was a regular season ACC champ, I think they're highly overrated. I don't think they're the best out of the ACC. And uh, while I think the five seed is probably right for Miami, I think they take an L to Drake. So that's my sleeper game. Um, otherwise, the, the Midwest has some intriguing stuff. Auburn got – an interesting break and in being able to play their first two games in Birmingham. That's going <laughs> yeah. to give Houston a little bit of trouble, but I, I don't think Houston's going to collapse to that. I, you, I do want think some, you want some inside scoop on that house? Yeah. How'd that happen? Well, no, here's what's going to happen because Alabama fans have bought almost all the tickets that were available. Oh, so Auburn is going to be playing in a hostile environment. Oh, well, that's interesting. Wow, that's Houston very... is going to be Houston's going to be favored by the Alabama crowd big time. Oh, that is very interesting. Well, then only uh, on the pod do you hear that? Look at that. People people need to tune in to 106 so they can hear that. But in the end, I think uh, Houston faces Texas, and Houston comes out of the Midwest. Marcus Sasser is a stud. This is a team that's been to the national championship game in 2021, still with experience from it. I think that experience carries them over a very talented Texas team. I do think you're going to get a one, two matchup in that Midwest, but Houston will take it to win that. And I think we're holding off the rest of the picks for, for the time being, right? Yeah, how far yeah. did you go? I, I went as far as the winner of my, my region, yeah. the Midwest, ah, okay. the winner of the Midwest, I, I believe will be the very, very talented Houston Cougars who, while they took one on the chin yesterday from Memphis, uh, they are a suffocating defense, a great scoring offense, a great rebounding team, great offensive rebounding team with a lot, a lot of talent, and a very good coach, Calvin Sampson. So I like Houston to come out. All right. Anybody have anything else you want to weigh in on, on the Midwest briefly? I, House, I, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. In fact, I'll probably go 12-5 too. But I'm, after seeing Miami play a couple times this year, they are long and they're fast and they're athletic. And I'm not sure that they can uh, – that Drake is going to be able to stay with them. I mean, I've, I've got actually got Miami, you know, possibly making a little noise against Indiana. So um, that's just from my perspective. I, after watching the ACC all year, I, I think Miami is going to be a tough out. Yeah, you have a good beat on that. So you may be right on the ACC stuff there, but I, it, I, it'll be a good game. All right. Anybody else on the Midwest? No? Okay. Let's move to the West. Rooster? The West is the most stacked region in this bracket. It's it's a brutal draw for for a bunch of teams. There's there's probably six teams in the West who at one point or another saw themselves as a final. Well, we have a Can't. technical. There we go. You're back, Rooster. You're yeah, you're gonna. Second. 
we're going to be looking at Kansas playing Arkansas in the second round. Mm. I mean, that's a tough draw. Um, UCLA, Boise State, TCU, and Gonzaga, and then UConn and St. Mary's. St. Mary's is a good team. They just got smoked by Gonzaga recently by about 26 points. But, uh, I, you know, the, these are all really good teams. In fact, in metric, the, you guys hear me? Yeah, now I think we do. in and out. Push your cord in more. I think when you move your head a certain way, we lose you. I wonder if it's a loose cable. Most of the predictive uh, metrics that the analysts are using these days have Connecticut in the top 10. Um, this Ken Palm strength of schedule ranking has Connecticut number four, UCLA number two, which that was probably before the injury, Gonzaga seven and Kansas nine. And then when you adjust it for offensive efficiency, they've got Gonzaga at one and Connecticut at five. So <clears throat> Connecticut, it could certainly go all the way out of that region um, for, I guess, sentimental reasons. That's who I'm picking. I've got Arkansas upsetting Kansas, which I know is going to be a shocker to many people uh, since Kansas has got a top five player, a top five freshman and an elite point guard. But I just don't see him, you know, going twice in, twice in a row. Uh, Gonzaga is playing like the number one offense in the country right now after a really mediocre season. So they're kind of a tough one to pick as well. Uh, and UCLA, I just think without Jalen Clark, um, you really have to discount that team. Uh, <clears throat> they, they got whacked. Well, they didn't get whacked, but they lost in the Pac-10. Who's, who watched the Big 12 championship game where Texas just pasted Kansas by 20 points. Anyone no, see that? No, I didn't get to see that one. No. <clears throat> anyway, that's kind of, that's kind of, um, uh, uh, um, informing my upset pick there. Uh, but I've got, I've got, uh, in the, in the sweet 16 and that bracket, I've got UCLA, Gonzaga, Yukon and Arkansas with Gonzaga and UConn moving on and UConn beating Gonzaga and going to the final four and <clears throat> the uh, ESPN crew led by Jay Billis agrees with me. <laughs> well, what's your, what's your, oh. what's your best game in that bracket, in that bracket that you see <clears throat> Kansas, Arkansas, for sure. Um, potential upset. Watch out for VCU um, at 12 over St. Mary. St. Mary's, like I say, is a good team. Um, but VCU is back to playing like they did with Shaka Smart when he was the coach, and they can press the daylights out of out of teams, and and just you know turn the game into chaos. All right, anybody else got any insights on the? So you got UConn, UConn in the Final Four. Wow, I, I do yeah. agree with Rooster that the West I think is the hardest. You know, they always say like one of these is just the evil bracket, uh, yeah. the evil region. I think the West is evil. There's so much talent, like you said. Okay, you can take Kansas, you can take Gonzaga out of that region, and they'd all be good picks. UCLA's dealing with two two fairly significant injuries, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They they do have, I mean, to their credit, they do have a pretty solid veteran core. They still have that point guy guard, Tiger Campbell He's been there and, forever. and that tough as nails guy, Jaime. How do you pronounce yeah. his name? Waquez, Jaquez, Jaquez. Yeah. He's a, he's tough as nails. So they still have uh, a pretty solid team, but um, lose, losing Jalen Clark, who is the defensive player in the year in the PAC 12 is I think going to really, make it tough for them to hang with Gonzaga. Uh, and then the, the big shot blocker too, right? Uh, Bo, is it Bona? That's right. Yes. He's, he may be out also. Right. So definitely some injuries that could, could really affect UCLA, which was uh, otherwise having a great season. I'm, I'm going to be... go ahead. You might, we might be seeing Rick Pitino in the Big East next season, too. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. It'll be interesting to see how how the Gales play in round one with that news floating around all, all week. 
Well, there's a lot of teams that, that have that, that are dealing with that uh, right now. Yeah, but they were kind of nothing until they got him. So that's, oh, yeah. I think that's a bigger loss. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be interested in, in assuming that it comes about the second round game of TCU, who's been playing really well uh against Gonzaga because yep. if you guys remember Gonzaga was a prohibitive favorite over Baylor and they just got punched in the mouth and they never came back from it so TCU is one of those big 12 teams that can deliver a punch and uh let's see if Gonzaga is really tournament ready this year they have not exactly the same core but Drew Timmy is still there so they still have a little PTSD from getting uh, whacked by Baylor, and let's. I think that could be a really interesting second round game. I'm always so confused about this. I'm always so confused about this, Pope. Do you like TCU or do you hate TCU? <laughs> it's always very hard to moving target here. So just try to, I just want to make sure I'm clear. You like Zach is scoring like 87 plus points a game. Um, and they're starting to play a little defense now. So yeah, no, but they play a finesse game. You know, yeah, and yeah. Big Twelve are they bring it? So it's just it's it's really going to be interesting. I'll talk about it in my segment. Be really interesting to see how strong the Big Twelve really is because that that's going to tell us a lot about where the you know does Kansas, Texas, yep. do those guys uh, do they survive? I feel like that favors UConn too because the Big East has been really physical this year, and they're going to get away from that at least for the first couple or three rounds and you know i think they'll they'll be able to out physical some of these teams all right anything uh anything else on the west all right next up we've got the south pope um before you get started i think this is probably as good a time as any (laughs) to talk about um North Carolina, man. Unprecedented. So, unprecedented number one preseason ranked team. Yep. Coming out of the finals last year and not in the tourney. Not just the finals, but they were up double digits at halftime and uh, had a chance to, you know, tie the game at the buzzer. So um, something happened, guys. Uh, in between the uh, halftime of the national championship game and uh, this season, I, I may I may address it a little bit more in a later segment. But Stolen let's just girlfriends. Say, Stolen girlfriends. Let's just mm. say that um, this is a probably the most disappointing college basketball season for one team in NCAA history, which is that's saying a and, lot. And yet they're too good to play in the NIT. We'll get there. Well, and, oh. and and before before we move away from that, it is nice to see that you have transitioned very nicely into your Alabama. Yeah, uh, now he's an Alabama I mean, fan all of a sudden. Please, yeah. fans, watch our YouTube so you can see the bandwagon in full effect. Yes. Now, 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 now. It 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 just so happens that my my pick to win the South happens to also be my favorite college football team. It, oh my God! No coincidence whatsoever. Look, right. Look, when we look at the South, uh, Alabama, just like I indicated, they're going to have home court advantage in Birmingham for the first two rounds. Um, I, I think the South, I don't know if you guys uh, have looked at it very closely, but I think the South is really top heavy. Um, I think Alabama yeah. and Arizona are, they're not going to have much problem getting to the final, uh, to the Elite Eight, I don't think. Agreed. And, and I think that, I think that, Baylor is is overrated. They're overseeded. They they kind of stumbled towards the end of the season. They had some bad losses. Um, I can't tell you how much I hate the Virginia basketball the oh. product that they put on the court. Um, yeah, it is it is so painful to watch. You don't like uh, defense? It is it is like as Bison yeah. says with lawyers on the defense side taking depositions. It's tedious. It's just so. It's- they, yeah. they focus on defense, but they don't they don't defend the three point line. They they think this is 1950s offense. That well, they didn't have to in North against. Carolina because they couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. But but but, you know, they just grind the game to a halt. I mean, you look at a at a score halftime score and a lot of times it's in the teens or low 20s for a Virginia or their opponent. 
Um, I don't think that type of basketball, although Tony Bennett did win a national championship yeah. a couple years ago, but I don't think he's got the same team. And I don't think that kind of basketball is going to play well in this region. He and had then, three guys go to the NBA from that team the year before they were at one and out. Yeah. Well, they, they lost in the first round. They were the as, number as, one seed. Yeah. And it got knocked lost, out. Yeah. The only time that's ever happened. So then you look at, you know, kind of the middle of the bracket and you got San Diego State, Creighton, Mizzou, Maryland, you know, it's a bunch of meh as far as I'm concerned. But then it gets interesting because West Virginia, they had some good wins. Mm -hmm. They had some some bad losses in the Big 12, too, but they're a tough team. And we're going to find out pretty quick when they play Maryland, uh, Big 12 versus Big 10, who got the most in, you know, both conferences in the tournament. We're going to find out which conference might have the uh, the edge there. Um, and then uh, I think College of Charleston, they're probably my sleeper uh, in this in this bracket. And I realize they're the number 12 seed, so it's a popular pick. But they they only have three losses, one of which was to my heels. But College of Charleston is going to be a really tough out. They are they're on a, quite a roll. And um, I, I see them beating San Diego State. And I actually I actually wow. them, I've got them over over Virginia in a really game you want to slit your wrist watching game uh because they're going to try to grind charleston to a halt but i do think i do think virginia is vulnerable um and so you know nc state is my other sleeper and has nothing to do with the fact they're you know 20 miles away from chapel hill it's just that they put a exciting product out on the court um as evidenced by their you know blowing out um uh Oh, hell. Somebody that in the ACC tournament, I can't remember who it was, uh, and then turned around and got blown out by uh, by UVA. Uh, so, you know, they got blown out by Clemson. Sorry, Clemson. Here's what's interesting. Clemson blows out NC State back to back weeks and doesn't make the tournament. Beat them by 20 points each game and doesn't make the tournament. So go figure what all that matters what all that means. But uh, I think NC State can make a little run. Um, my final four uh, is uh, Bama against Charleston and NC State against Arizona. And I got chalk, obviously. I got Bama, Arizona with Bama going to the final four. And I don't really know if they're going to be contested that much. It's it's This region really plays well. Yeah. Together. Arizona's a good team. Obviously, they beat UCLA in the uh, – Pac-12 championship, but uh, I don't think they have the horses to keep up with Alabama and Brandon Miller and uh, Javon Quinterly and and those guys. Uh, Bama is going to be tough to beat. Karma. Karma's undefeated. <laughs> They're the number one team in the country right now. It's going to catch up to them at some point. It might. Did you see their, did you see their new T-shirts they have for their fans? Killing it in the tournament. Yeah, I don't think those were actually Alabama sponsored T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, the guy got kicked out of the uh, tournament who had those shirts. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there's classy. drama. There's drama over the program, and there will be all the way to the Final Four. And does it actually get into the locker room and into their heads and affect their performance? So far, it hasn't. But um, you know, the stakes couldn't be higher as we keep going higher. Can we please can can we just have Maryland lose in the first round, please? Can I think they're going to lose to West Virginia. Isn't yeah, that who they're playing. Yeah, yeah. Let's just. I, please I think West make Virginia that beats them. That would be great. That would be great, and I wouldn't mind seeing Virginia go out in that round too. But I, but really, Maryland, just West Virginia, just bury them, please. What's All right, going anyone? on in the East? All right, so the East. Um, what is going on in the East? I don't know. This is an interesting um, bracket, I think. So I'll tell you this. My um, best game, and I, and I went with the first round best game, is Kentucky-Providence. And yep. I know Providence is sort of, you know, they, they haven't been playing great, but the kid Bryce Hopkins is a Kentucky uh, transfer. Mm. Yep. And – He's yep. got a little little chip on his shoulder, a little something to prove there. So I think that's going to be an interesting game. I, I'm re not really sure what to make of Kentucky. Um, they've sort of been kind of up and down, it seems like, all year. I mean, they started out, what, one and three in the SEC and then kind of went on a little bit of a of a run and, and did okay. Uh, and Providence is not playing great. That Providence is another team 
that has a lot of uh, uh, drama around their head coach also. Because uh, right now, if, if you listen to, to the Twitterati, uh, their head coach is the top candidate to come to Georgetown. Um, so there's not, there's a little uh, distraction there too. But, you know, I think whenever you have a kid who leaves a school and says on his way out the door or, or says the next season that Calipari didn't let me do what I, what I could be best at. He made me do certain things and here I'm thriving because coach Cooley lets me do whatever I want. Um, he's obviously ready to rumble. So I think that's going to be a really fun game. Yeah. Uh, as far as a sleeper, I don't know if you can even call this a sleeper pick, but Michigan State is a seven seed. They have uh, three guys who are, you know, on the uh, uh, the Big Ten, all Big Ten teams ranked through there. And do you know how many seasons Izzo's been to the tournament in a row? I think it's something crazy, like 24 or 25 consecutive. 25 rank. years in That's a row. Nuts. Wow. That's nuts. That's nuts. That is bananas. So I, I don't know that it's a sleeper, but I, I don't know. How do you, I mean. I mean, you got I, the mini Michigan. blue blood bracket there with Duke, can, Duke Kentucky and Mississippi uh, and, and uh, Memphis State. Mm. Excuse me. Marquette. Michigan State. Michigan State. Five, six, and seven. Yeah. Now, Those guys I are used to number you, one seeds. So mm. I, I will tell you, I mean, I've got, I've got Purdue and I, and I got Memphis. I mean, Memphis uh, with, with Penny Hardaway, I've got them winning. Um, I, I have Duke over Oral Roberts. I know the five twelve, but I just don't. I, I just don't think that's going to work out. I have Tennessee. Duke's playing well, yeah, Duke's playing yeah. well. I have Tennessee coming out over Louisiana. I do have Kentucky over Providence, K State over Montana State, Michigan State over USC and Marquette. Uh, and then I've got um, Purdue beating Memphis, uh, Tennessee over Duke, K State over Barnes. Kentucky. Tennessee over Duke. Yeah. That's going to be a great game. I have Marquette over Michigan State going against my sleeper, but again, they are a sleeper pick. I think Marquette is playing really well right now. Shaka. Yeah. And then I've got Purdue and Marquette um, with Purdue coming out of the bracket. So, but, but, you know, there's going to be some interesting stuff. I mean, looking at, at Shire for Duke, how far can he take them? Um, you know, in, in his first season. Um, yeah, Shaka Smart has, you know, he's got a team playing sort of like his VCU days. It got him all his yeah. attention. Yep. Uh, and then, so I, it's a, it is a fun bracket. You're right. There is a lot of uh, blue bloods in there. And, and so I think it's a fun little, little bracket down there. I you think know, Purdue, the e- go ahead, go ahead. I think Purdue is going to be interesting because they were recently exposed as being a team that cannot handle the press. And a team like Memphis, I could see Memphis jumping on them defensively, and and uh, knocking them off. And then I then I think Duke, Duke. I th- I have Duke beating whoever wins the Purdue Memphis game. Duke's mm-hmm. freshmen have finally come together, and they're playing the best basketball they have in over you know it, more than just this season. I I, I think. Mm-hmm. We're going to get the answer to the question in the East as does size matter because <laughs> yeah, there are three of the best big men in the whole tournament, all in the East. Uh, Zach Eady, this guy who's seven four three oh five. If you haven't seen this guy play, looks like Frankenstein on the court for Purdue. He's a monster. He is. But I but but I agree with Rooster that Memphis has the kind of defense stifling defense that has the ability to shut them down and shock them. I would press Purdue the whole game. It it will really be do the, can Edie and his size overtake Memphis in their pressure with Duke again, Kyle Filipowski, you know, phenom freshman, tremendous center freshman of the year in the ACC uh, does can his size overcome three-point shooting from Oral Roberts and that Max Acemus guy who uh, you had that Cinderella story a couple years ago? I would love to see Filipowski and Edie match up in the Sweet 16. And then you guys remember this guy from Kentucky, Tashibwe, that power yeah. forward guy who's just a stud. He will be a great NBA mm-hmm. player. Mm-hmm. If those guys 
uh, prevail, it's because in that region size matters. But there's a lot of good guard play there too. I th- East is going to be really, really fun. It, uh, the Connecticut has a seven-two freshman that you should look out for next year. A guy named Donovan Klingon, but he's right now stuck behind their star Sonogo. Uh, and is like the sixth guy off the bench. He's he's going to be a good one next year. It's pretty pretty cool how this back to back year, you've got Hubert Davis running that incredible story out of UNC last year, and I, I think even the Dukies had to be surprised that Shire pulled this off in year number one, mm-hmm. winning the ACC tournament. And if he makes a run with this team, it's, it's going to be deja vu all over again with, with UNC last year and Shire and Duke this year, that that could happen. They're playing very, very well. Mm-hmm. And with a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. What else? We got anything else on the East? All right, then here we are. It's time for everybody's predictions. So let's start. Uh, Pope, let's get you. You go, you go first. We want your final four, your championship game, and your winner. All right. So I got, as you know, I have Alabama coming out of the South. I have Shaka Smart and Marquette coming out of the East. He is loving not having to be in the spotlight of Austin and thriving. Uh, at Marquette and has got a tough team. Uh, I got Texas over Kansas coming out of the Midwest. They've been playing really well lately and um, uh, well, not over Kansas. They beat Kansas twice. So that's one reason I'm um, thinking they're playing really well. And out of the West, I have Kansas. So I got a matchup of Kansas and Texas in the final four. Are we going through all the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I got, I got, I got Kansas finally third times a charm in the last three games with Bill Self back. Uh, I got Kansas um, prevailing and playing against Alabama in the national championship. And uh, I got the Nate and Nick show as Alabama raises their first national championship basketball banner down in Houston. Cut the nets. Roll tide. Okay. Well, let's stick with a little more homerism and go to Rooster. Uh, I'm, by the way, how long? How many years have we been doing this now? At least two years, right? This this podcast. Yeah, and this it, is our it, third it, tournament. When when have you ever heard the word Alabama and basketball come out of Pope's mouth before this March? As soon he didn't as you even know they got had, knocked out. He didn't even know they had a. He didn't know they had a basketball team. He thought it was just the stadium where they run where they was, practice indoor football. He thought it was a club team two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun when he's rooting for UNC football in the fall. Yeah, All right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am, I am a homer. I've got UConn coming out of the West, Texas out of the Midwest, Alabama coming out of the South, and Duke out of the East. Ugh. Alabama over Duke. Yes. U- Texas over UConn. Alabama over Texas for the championship. Wow. Wow. God. Rooster. All right. I'll go. I'll go next. Um, I've got, I've been making some changes here as we go along, too. I've got uh, Marquette coming out of the East. I'm going Arizona. Out of the South, Houston from the Midwest, and Rooster. Big I've East, got baby. The UConn Huskies. Ah, oh my God! Coming out of the West, <laughs> but that's where the that's where the Big East homerism stops because yep. I've got Arizona yep. playing Houston in the championship game, and Houston. Will be the national champion. Wow. What a story that Boy, would be if they cut the nets down in their own city. That'd be we, unbelievable. We, hey, listen, we are going to need milk to come in and uh, and choose a Samoa here because wait till you hear this. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is crazy. Rainbows unite. I've got uh, Arizona in, in what I agree will be one of the best games. Uh, the, the, the South championship between Arizona and Alabama should be amazing, but I think Arizona pulls it off. Um, I think 
not enough people are talking about Marquette. I'm glad to see you guys giving them some love here. That team is good. It's one of the best scoring teams in the country. Guard play is what matters in the tournament. They've got fantastic guard play. They're well coached. I think uh, Marquette comes out. Uh, then I've got also Houston. I think they struggle in the first two games with some scares. Um, but I think they prevail in the Midwest and in the West, uh, I've got Gonzaga. I think that team is playing really, really well and do not underestimate Drew Timmy and his ability to turn it on and carry that team. They are on all cylinders right now. So in the final, I am just like Bison. I, I think once Houston is there in the final four in Houston, they're going to have that home court advantage. They're going to carry that. And Houston is going to face Arizona. And Houston is going to cut the nets down wow. at home as a national champion. We've got two Alabamas and two, two Houstons. Houstons. Where are you, Milk? We need your tie Wow. Right wow. Is it a, By the way, on that Samoa thing, I want to go back and <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I really do think we we did a disservice to the trefoils. I'm not going. Oh lie. my god, the trefoils! Think, the trefoils are actually a strong cookie. I thought the tag along <laughs> was your cookie. It is. Oh, the tag along is definitely the champion. That that, that was such a joke. The Samoa is such a joke. But I really <laughs> do think Vince we was the champion. <laughs> we did not. We did not give trefoils the respect they they deserve. That was isn't 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 she dating um, um, Trump Jr. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kimberly Guilfoyle. Oh, Kimberly Guilfoyle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> Anything else on March Madness? So the games actually start um, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, tomorrow night, and and we didn't really talk oh, about the play-ins. Yeah. The yeah. play-ins. Um, I guess they call them the first four, and we got Texas A and M CC. Well, I don't Corpus even know what Christi. that is. Corpus, Corpus Christi. Oh. Yeah. Come on. You know, you only get you only get one set of initials in your name. I'm sorry. If you have two (laughs) sets of initials, you shouldn't be even allowed to play versus Southeast Missouri State, Mississippi State versus Pittsburgh, Arizona State versus Nevada. Another good game. Yeah. Yeah. And Texas Southern versus uh, FDU. Fairly ridiculous. Fairly, fairly Dickinson. Fairly Dickinson. Dickinson. The the two 11 seed games, 11 versus 11, are really good games. Uh, Yeah. Jeff Capel coached Pitt team. I think that's a pretty good team, actually. They could actually even give Iowa State a little bit of a scare in the 6-11. They they single-handedly kept Carolina out of the tournament by beating them twice. Yeah. Literally. Because they were the last four in. Those teams were... And the first four out was Oklahoma State, uh, and then Carolina was third, and uh, Clemson was fourth. So, so we've got a uh, six forty tip off tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday night, and that's on True TV. Um, and then we're off and running at that point. And I guess I have one other question: How's what's the best way to watch the tourney now? I mean. Can you go to the CBS app? What's the what's the story? Has anybody looked at that? Is there a way to watch multiple games at a time? You know, to tell tell our listeners what's the best way to maximize your viewing experience. Anybody? This Pope's wheelhouse. Go to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Pope? Yeah, no. I mean, on on the CBS app, you can watch any game you want to. Okay, but I but I but I. Uh, only then, one, then, obviously, only one game I, at a time, though, right, Pope? I think, but I think every game, I think every game is on like True TV or CBS, TNT, TBS, or yeah. TNT, TBS. Yeah, they, they're, they're all game. they're all available. But I was just wondering if there was like a channel where you could post all the active games at one time on one screen. And it sounds like we have failed our listeners and don't have the information. Again, gents, this is the time to get your vasectomy. Schedule it for this Thursday and Friday. Ice it up and enjoy the games. You can watch every game you want. Yeah. All right. Anything else on March Madness? Let's do it. Uh, Hot shots. Hot shots. Anybody got a hot shot they want to throw out there this week? I am going to take my shot. Uh on the world baseball classic which is surprisingly entertaining like at first when i saw this before i was like all right 
it's kind of a knockoff of World Cup. And really, how much baseball is there outside of the Caribbean and the U.S.? But the Asian countries have gotten tremendously good. And uh, I guess with the very liberal rules that they allow players to play on some of these other teams and say that they're connected to these countries, even though they have no <laughs> connections, it makes for a fun atmosphere. Um, and I mean, if you're what, if you're hearing the stands, like this really sounds like playoff world series, baseball, the, the, the crowds have been crazy. The baseball players seem like extra, extra animated, but here's the thing. The USA has put themselves in an incredibly precarious position. And we were talking about when we got started that one of our listeners, Ryan Rapley, who's a huge baseball fan, was saying, hey, you guys going to turn on to watch the best baseball team ever assembled. And if you look at the lineup, it's hard to disagree with them, except they really kind of struggled for a little bit against Great Britain until Kyle Schwarber hit a blast. And then yesterday they lost to a Mexico team that they shouldn't struggle with at all. And because there's a run differential there, they have a, they have a game against a decent Canada team. And then they have to uh, play another Columbia. game against Colombia. And I mean, the USA has never not made it out of the first round, but they've put themselves in a precarious position. And I think it's, worth watching good baseball worth watching but this could be a prelim to a punchable face if the usa doesn't slide out of the first round of the world baseball classic it's it's fun to watch if our listeners haven't put on any of the world baseball classic it's worth watching these all-star teams all right next anybody else got a got a shot yeah i've got uh uh over the weekend the players championship at sawgrass um was it's one of the fun uh, TV tournaments for people to watch, especially the drama. And there are actually two holes in one. The first time they've ever had two hole in one on 17 in, in the tournament, uh, the same tournament. Um, and it, just the atmosphere at the TPC is uh, something that, that Liv can go, you know, they'll never have anything close to that. So fuck Liv. Uh, <laughs> that being said, uh, it appears that. Um, I think you just, you just violated your sponsorship contract with them. You should be careful. Oh, right. Yes. True. With, with the C-dub. So yeah. uh, it's clear now that the, the big three uh, are, are finally emerging with, with Rom, Scotty Scheffler, who had uh, is now the number one, had an incredible tournament. He won by five shots uh, and was never really contested on, uh, on Sunday. And Rory, he didn't have a very good tournament. He missed the cut, but he's, he's still, uh, playing elite golf. I think it's going to be fun to watch the majors. Um, and Augusta is only a, uh, less than a month away uh, because, you know, Rory needs that for his career major, uh, for his career grand slam. And uh, uh, Rom is probably playing the best. Uh, he had a, a stomach bug and, and couldn't finish, but uh, Scheffler will be defending. And I think the big three will be fun to watch. And the PGA is putting a good product out on uh, uh, TV right now and just continue um, with the big three. I just think Scotty Scheffler is playing elite world-class golf right now, and it's fun to watch. Agreed. Rooster, you got a, you got a shot? Yeah, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had to get rid of my headphone. It wasn't working. I want to go back to the World Baseball Classic. Nope. Uh, did you hear about the uh, o- uh, Otani home run in the, in the Japanese game? Woman caught this home run, and as is tradition in, in jet with Japanese fans, she then passed it around the whole stadium one by one. People passed the ball around, checked it out, and eventually gave it back to her. Can you imagine that <laughs> happening? Never. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, that's what wow. they were going to do with the Aaron Judge home run in Texas, yeah, but it didn't right, work that way. Right. 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 You know, my other. Yeah. My other thought for the day is how fun is it going to be watching Jimmy G play quarterback in Sin City? You know, wow, what could go wrong there? A lot yeah. of weapons. Yeah, that's right. A lot of strippers too. Right. So right. <laughs> he's he's been known to keep one on his arm from time to time. Yeah. Uh, all right, I got a shot. I got, and it's really a question I want to throw up for you guys. And it's a homerism question, but I think it's a good one. March Madness. Georgetown coaching job. Is it a good job? Because there's a lot of guys in the tournament 
who people are talking about would would are potentially coming to Georgetown, uh, including Patino, including Shrews, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. Uh, Mike Cooley. Bray is being mentioned. Mike Bray apparently is just a, that's probably apparently a bogus rumor. Of course, now that I say okay. it, they'll announce his signing right now. But <laughs> well, I've read a lot of stuff that say this, that he's not really in the in the conversation. But is this a good job? I would not leave Providence and I would not leave Penn State for the Georgetown job. I would lose I would leave Delaware. I would leave Iona. I would leave a mid-major one, one of those. But I think it's a good job, but it's not it's not a lateral job from one of the big conferences. Sorry. I, it's they've dropped too far. Well, if I was Mighty Mouse Studemeyer, who just went to Georgia Tech, I'd rather go to Georgetown than Georgia Tech. That's true. That's true. You know, maybe that's the kind of coach you need to get it. Well, that's what sort of what you just got rid of, though, is somebody's sole experience was playing in the NBA and being an assistant coach somewhere. <laughs> well, I mean, do you think Georgetown, the name is does still mean something to the kids? Because if you get the right guy in there and with a recruiting class, it doesn't take much to turn it around in the Big East. We've seen that. So, the, yeah. The what do you East think? Do you think back. that Georgetown on the Jersey still means anything? Is that your question? So. I think it's. Uh, a, I was surprised to learn that Georgetown actually has a pretty high budget for the basketball program, uh, relatively speaking to, to other schools. Uh, I do think it's still a good job, and I think that it, if you had the right person come in and turn it around, you you could turn it around quickly. And then once you turn it around the memories come back. Yeah. Right. You know, all of a sudden the kids start remembering the history a little more right. and it could become a, a, you know, a sleeping giant. And the so league's on an upswing. The conference is on an upswing. Yeah. Maybe you could get Bayheim for a year. <laughs> yeah. I thought about that. that oh, yeah. I thought about that. It's awkward yeah. leaving. Yeah, exactly. All right. Who's got a punchable face? Pope? Oh, I got one. I got one. You go first, Pope. I'm going to, punch my homer self basically um you know north carolina was uh a half away like we talked about from an, an improbable national championship last year in hubert davis's first year uh they were seated number eight nobody gave them any chance and they they made an incredible run they beat duke you know in the game that i told you guys was the greatest sporting moment i'd ever seen you know live uh and so they decided you know to run it again and they brought back the same guys, uh, minus Brady Manick. Of course, we realized how much we lost Brady Manick uh, during the course of the season. But the hype um, was not uh, tempered at all by the Carolina basketball program. In fact, as you guys know, the Carolina basketball uh, office created this fake Sports Illustrated recreation of the 1982 famous Sports Illustrated mm. cover. Uh, where Dean Smith and the four guys that they went on to win the championship uh, were standing around. The four guys were Baycott, uh, Love, Davis, and Le and uh, Leaky Black were standing around Hubert Davis, same pose. Um, so the hype was, um, uh, by from the player standpoint, from the basketball program standpoint, um, but they, for whatever reason, uh, whether it was NIL money, whether it was voices outside of the locker room, whether it was Hubert Davis's inability to connect with the players uh, or Pete Nance's ability to, to pick up where Manic left off or complete inability to develop a bench. Um, it was a colossal disaster. And it was like watching a train wreck uh, unfold every game because you knew when the game came down to two or three minutes that they were going to do something and screw it up and choke. And they did. And they didn't deserve to go to the tournament. However, they earned an NIT. They would have been a number one seed. They would have earned the NIT um, tournament. And their response was to pick up their ball and go home. The basketball office issued a press release yesterday uh, saying that their goals had not been met. Their goal was a national championship. And because they hadn't met their goal, um, they had decided they were not going to pursue any postseason tournament and they looked forward to the future of Carolina basketball and thanked everybody for a great year. And that was it. Hubert Davis didn't come out and face the heat, no press conference. 
no, no, uh, anything else from the basketball office except for that press release. Contrast that with Roy Williams, what he did in 2010, the year after they won the national championship with that amazing team with Tyler Hansbrough. Um, they lost all their players. Of course, they all went lottery, but they lost all their players and they had a horrible year by their standards and they got it bid to the NIT. And Roy Williams, over some protest from some people in the program and some of the players said, we are Carolina basketball and we are going to show up and we are going to play. And they went to the uh, to the finals. They were runner up in IT. And, and, and Roy said, you know, they got some good experience from the practice and from the game situation that it, it, uh, got them, you know, primed for the next year. Um, when given the same opportunity, Hubert Davis punted. And I, and I think, you know, that's a, that's a, uh, a red flag for a lot of us who follow the program uh, that he was not able to overcome. Now, evidently, they had an anonymous vote in the locker room uh, and the vote was no. But a strong coach says, I don't care. Give me five healthy guys and we're going to go out and we're going to compete and we're going to play because that's what North Carolina basketball does. So a big punch, and I'm not sure where it lands, but it's definitely to the basketball office and to Hubert Davis and his coaching staff for not motivating these kids if they can't make the NCAA tournament to at least want to go and compete in the NIT tournament. It's a stain on North Carolina basketball, and I'm uh, ashamed that I have to do this, but it is something that was necessary and it'll be very interesting seeing how boom going forward, Hubert handles the heat because their heat is a coming. We'll punch it with, with you. that. And with that hope is sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> Don't let her listen. <laughs> I can't believe if that's true that the players like what competitive kid says, I don't want to play any more basketball. Well, I think the stories are going to come out and, and not the story that we're talk you were talking about as far as RJ and, and Caleb, but stories are going to come out that they had, they had difficulty um, for whatever reason, deciding that it was important for them to listen to the coaching staff and actually do the things necessary every game, every minute of every game to win because they thought they could just turn it on when they needed to. And eventually they got to the point where they couldn't do that. And I think they turned on each other. And I don't think the, I think the locker room um, was probably fairly toxic at the end. Uh, and we're going to start hearing those stories trickle out. That'd be my guess. And so, so I think that's, they're not wanting that's to play bigger, together. They don't want to play together. That's, that's why they said problem. no. But, you know, I, it's not that uncommon for a team to get invited to the NIT and turn it down. I mean, I think this is something that happens once or twice a season when a team gets snubbed or they really just had an awful season. Uh, it, it, you know, these are kids. They're college kids. They miss a lot of time in the classroom. They miss a lot of time on campus. And, you know, the idea of having to keep it going for another couple of weeks, um, I, I, I understand why the decision might be made. But the bigger issue and the bigger punch is if the locker room was so toxic that they didn't want to play together the way you just said it, Pope. To me, that's that's where the punch comes in. It's just a toxic soup. Uh, yeah. And, and the expectation game was set so high that they were never able to meet it for whatever reason. And um, it's, just a, it's just a very disappointing and really sad end to what could have been a really – great era of North Carolina basketball. Um, and I feel bad for the players. I feel bad for what happened. Um, we'll, we'll always have the Duke wins at, uh, at Cameron and in, in the final four, knocking coach K out, kicking him to the curb, but it's, it's, a um, it's a lot, a very frustrating season. And I think if they had shown up for the NIT, it would have said a lot about their character. And I think the fact they didn't speaks volumes. I think if Milk were here, he would say that's a damn shame. <laughs> that is a damn shame. Yeah. All right. I know there's more punches this week. Alice, you got one? So I know we like uh, to talk about rules sometimes to start out the pod. Section three, character and conduct of the CCA mechanics manual for baseball says that 
an umpire can be suspended for conduct and actions deemed detrimental to a conference in NCAA baseball. And I think everybody has seen this by now, but on Friday night, uh, Davon Mims of Mississippi Valley State came to the plate with two outs in the ninth inning against UNO baseball with a 1-1 count. They were losing 7-3. The, there wasn't really a game to be had. They were clear, clearly the undermanned team, but Mims came up with a 1-1 count, and home plate umpire Reggie Drummer saw the next pitch barely caught by the UNO catcher above the plate called strike two and Mims like kind of danced around in disbelief on strike two. And on the next pitch, the pitch was so far outside, well off the plate and uh, Reggie drummer, the home plate umpire rung him up to which for strike three to which Devin uh, Davon Mims had to be held back by the UNO's catcher who yeah, probably should get, swing the bat at him. Yeah. Who probably should get a lasso for his <laughs> yeah, restraint right. to pr- protect the umpire. The UNO radio play-by-play announcer who just won the game said he just got rung up on ball two. That is horrific. Drummer just wanted to go home. So the NCAA reviewed this, the conference reviewed this, the Southland conference, and they, they suspended the ump for that call. And uh, I, I just want to say on top of that suspension, the SMQBs also want to punch this umpire. You know that a lot of times I go off on refs who take over the game. I, I, I think umpires, referees in games should be the wedding photographer. You don't see them. You don't hear them. They just take the pictures of the game. And that is not what Reggie Drummer wanted to do. It's a shame that the Southland Conference and these two teams had to get a spotlight because of this. But uh, that is outrageous. It's probably not the only time it happens. It just happened to be the kind of thing that came on ESPN. And uh, shame on you, Reggie Drummer. And enjoy uh, watching the NCAA men's basketball from the couch since you're not umpiring this weekend, along with a punch to your face. The 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 conference. Uh, when they concluded their investigation, they, I thought, announced that they concluded that the ump made that strike three call as a retaliation for for the kid complaining about strike two. Yep. Like he knew it was outside. He did it anyway. Yep. Awful. Never going to get me to disagree with punching an umpire. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Rooster, you got one? Well, I think Ole Miss needs a punch in the face for hiring Chris Beard. I mean, this guy in December had his fiance call 911, you know, at like the wee hours of the morning. And they have her on tape saying, he's choked me. He's thrown me off the bed. He's bit, he bit me. I'm all bruised up. He's thrown me around the room. I'm in fear of my life. And Texas investigated it, believed her, and fired him. And now Ole Miss is hires him they have this big press release the the age the a ad never once mentions this elephant in the room chris beard never once mentions it they're just sweeping it under the rug and going forward and you know i mean this guy was arrested in december for domestic violence i think there are other coaches out there old miss could have found they didn't need this guy well for for a completeness for our listeners, the charges were dropped. Now, of course, well, no dropped. kidding, Brian. The, 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 what do you think the, the fiance, fiance? What do you think the fiance's right. choices were? I understand. They drop the charges or find a new relationship. You know that happens all the time. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. She said, "Honey, I'd like to go to Oxford. I'll drop the charges." Where did she get those bruises from? Bison, please tell me you have a lasso for this week. I do have a lasso, oh, as a matter God. of fact. We, we've been missing them. Thank God. But I'm not going to lie. It doesn't come from the sports world. We're, we're going to expand beyond sports for just a minute because this is just a fun story. Oscars? And, and I th- it, is it is an Oscars. Oh. It is an Oscars. <laughs> it is. Milk is really missing this episode. Oh, he loves when Bison <laughs> goes to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> that well, should be a, should be a new uh, uh, segment for us. For, for 
for those of us of a certain age, there are some movies that, you know, they were just, uh, uh, I don't know, they're classics for growing up. And Raiders of the Lost Ark and Goonies are two of those movies that are just classics. Uh, I think even for Rooster, I think that's probably, you probably <laughs> that's true. Maybe I, I, I mean, I, I, not Goonies. I can't say that about Goonies, but definitely yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. And if you remember, um, Short Round and Data, Short Round was the, the kid in Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, actually, um, and Data and Goonies. And the actor is, uh, I think it's Ki He Kwan. It's Khan, is how you say it. And Ki He was the little boy actor. He got his chance and he was just this you know, charismatic, uh, really carried parts of those movies by himself. He's just a natural. And he went to a film school at Southern Cal. And then he never really got another shot to act again for some reason. And he he had a career as a stunt coordinator and a stunt director. Uh, and he so he worked in Hollywood, but he just never got that next shot uh, he had a couple movies, but nothing, nothing that was really that really went, and he never really got a shot. And fast forward, he stars in uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, which was the big winner last night, and he wins the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. But probably the the better moment, and the reason I'm giving a lasso, and and this just shows you that these things are all fixed anyway. By the way, because Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones himself is out there to award the best picture. And if you didn't know everything, everywhere, all at once was getting it at that point, you know, you had right. to. Because the moment where Kihi goes up on stage and Harrison Ford and him hug, I mean, it is a cool, cool story. Uh, and it it's deserving of a lasso. This guy finally gets his chance. He's in the best picture. He gets the, the Oscar for the best supporting actor. And he and it it just comes completely full full circle with Indiana Jones himself on stage there. And so uh Kihi and, and even Harrison to some degree, you guys are getting a lasso today outside of the sports world. Well, you know, one of those movies was that he was in was Encino Man. Yes. And who else was in Encino Man? Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Brendan yeah. Fraser. Brendan yeah. Fraser, right. Yeah. Another, yeah. another last one of these story. Yeah. 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 So um, you know, listen, last year's Oscars were remembered for something uh awful and, and stupid. Uh these there were some really good stories last night. And I'm not even really into the Oscars that much. I was really watching because I wanted to see Top Gun win everything. <laughs> I but, know. But <laughs> this guy, I just could not be happy for this guy and seeing uh Harrison Ford up there. I just thought it was pretty cool. Milk just phoned in to say that he wanted to give the Academy a, a punchable face for not giving it to Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sort of with him. All right. Anybody got another lasso? Anything else? Nope. All right. Good show, guys. On to March Madness. Yeah, one of the best weekends of the year coming up. Let's Ball is tipped. Again. Yeah. That's it. Have fun. Sorry, we're not going to be together. I think we need to make sure that happens next year. Yeah, next Count year. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye. See you.